So today we're going to work on a 3D building selection tool. So it's a little yellow box that will go around to the available spots. If you cannot build there, it'll be red. If you can build, it'll be yellow. And then you'll be able to click. It'll pop up a little menu. And then you can decide what towers or turrets you want. Now, if you haven't watched my 2D version of this, I suggest you go watch that because there's going to be a lot of code that's very similar, and I'm going to go through it fairly quickly. I will leave a link in the description. So the root node is just going to be a spatial, and we'll name that world, and that's where we're going to take care of most of the logic that goes with the selection tool. Then we have a grid map where I have made a mesh library I will explain the area when we go over how we're actually moving the selection tool around. But then we have the selection tool itself, which is another spatial that holds a mesh, and it will have a material in it, just like last time, one that will turn red and yellow depending on what you are hovering over. I also just want to mention that the mesh instance is just a simple cube mesh. This raycast is what's going to actually check to see where the mouse is hovering over. Now, it's going to shoot from the camera into the map, and then it'll tell us what grid space it collides with. This is just a basic camera. I didn't change anything on it. The menu container is actually a 2D node that is going to hold the pop-up menu that we will make in this scene over here. And then I just made a tower container for a place to put the towers as I build them. Now just going over the mesh library, I just pulled all the OBJ files into this here. And I could go through and add a mesh to every single one of these. Uh, I'm trying to work out a shortcut to make that work a little bit faster. I didn't feel like doing that for each individual mesh, so I'm hoping to have a follow-up video that will have an easier way of doing that than manually adding. But, so, the reason why we need this area back here is because I didn't actually add a static body and a collision shape to all of these meshes. So, I kind of cheated just for the sake of explaining quickly what's going on. I added this area to have something for this raycast to hit. Otherwise, the raycast will go right through and it won't actually be able to decide where it is colliding. So, since we're going to be calling these nodes multiple times um, every second, I decided to put them into on ready variables just so that it doesn't have to do a lookup on each frame. So, if we're not in a menu, we're going to get the mouse's 2D position on the screen, and we're going to translate that into a 3D position in the world. So project position is a built-in variable in the camera node that will change where the mouse, or where this position, so the mouse position, is in 2D space on the screen into the 3D space of the world in the game. So basically the from is just where the mouse is currently at. So then we're going to find the normal or just perpendicular to where the camera is, which means it's pointing where you're looking, essentially. It's going to get the normal of the camera that's pointing straight out. And once we find that normal, we're going to multiply that by the ray length. I just picked a large number. And we're going to add that to where the mouse currently is in 3D space. We're going to send a ray from where the mouse is to 2,000 ahead of it in the direction that the camera is looking. So then we're going to set the position or the translation of that ray, so the beginning of it, that's why we set the from where the mouse is, and we're going to cast it to where we calculated where the line should point to. We're going to update it to make sure that it hits on this frame. And then we're going to get the collision point of where that ray hits the map. And we're going to translate that into a grid map coordinate. And then we will get what type of cell 
that grid map coordinate is. If that tile, if that tile turns out to be just a flat blank tile, we will set the shader param color to yellow and say that we can build on it. If it's anything other than just a flat tile, like a rock or water or road, we're going to change the color to red and we will say that you cannot build on it. Now quickly, this mesh instance has a shader in the material and you have to have the shader type spatial for 3D. And I have this uniform here. So when you have hint colors, uh, you have to have a vector four to hold all four variables. But when you are setting the color in the fragment shader, it's not like a 2D shader where you have the color variable. You have the albedo and the alpha. So the albedo is the first three, the red, green, and the blue. And then you have to set the alpha separately in a 3D shader. So that's exactly what we do. We take that current color, and even though it's a vector four, you can just pull the first three variables from it, and then we'll just set the alpha to a half, and that should be good for now. So after we set the color of the material, we're going to actually move the box around. So if you remember this point, it gives us the grid map coordinate, and we, we can change that grid map coordinate back to a world coordinate. And after we do that, we just set the translation of the cube to that coordinate. Now here, we just check to see, just like last time, I set the action in the input uh, map to be the right button. And we see if we can build. And if we're not in a menu, then we're going to say that we're in a menu. We're going to make a menu instance. We're going to set the rect position to that mouse position. Again, we keep track of the mouse position where it's going until we actually go into a menu. So as soon as we turn go into a menu, this variable stops updating. So we can just add the menu to where that mouse was when you clicked it. And then we'll add that child to the menu or to the menu container. So just briefly, we'll go over this menu. It's a, exactly the same as last time. We have just a pop-up menu. We just have a pop-up menu. Again, you can't, even if you put it visible, you always have to, in the script, on the ready function, say that it's visible because you get this little warning that even if you have the visibility on, it will not show unless you turn the visibility on in the code. So then we're going to connect this signal exactly the same as last time, uh, except for, I again, this is a little bit hodgepodge, the get parent, get parent. If you look in here, the menu container, it's going to be placing the menus inside of this container, and it has to go up two steps to get to the script. I'm hoping to clean that up as the game progresses. We don't need to build a custom signal because it's already a signal that's part of the node. We can just connect it to the build turret function in the world. So again, I'm going to go over this quickly since this is exactly the same as last time. We have this build turret function. We take the ID, we match it, we get an instance of the preloaded scene that we have at the top of the screen. And both of those scenes are just simple spatial nodes with three different meshes in it because that's just how my uh, that's just how my models worked. The purple tower is the same thing. I saved those as scenes. I preload them here, and then we can instance them. Now the position of this tower, or the translation I should say, is going to be the same as where we have that little yellow box going. So we have been saving this position of the box. And again, that stops when you're in the menu because of this check at the top. So we can reliably know that when we place this tower, it's going to be in the same spot as where the yellow box stops. We will clear the menu container, and then we will change the grid map cell. That way, I, I just change it to one that basically had nothing on it. Because remember, we are checking to see if you can build 
based on what type of tile is in the grid map that we're pointing at. So we have to change it to something other than zero if we want to update it so you can't build on it. And then we will turn the menu off. So again, if you click the right mouse button and you are not in a menu, then it'll pop up a menu. Otherwise, it'll clear out all the menus and say that we're not in a menu. And that's what this function down here does. So what you end up with is a cursor that follows around, and you can build turrets wherever you want in 3D space. Now, it'll look a lot better once we add a few lights, and you can move the camera around, but that is going to be for another video. But if you like this, uh, please let me know. Uh, and I don't exactly know where I'm going with this, but I intend on going back and forth between isomet my isometric tower defense and my 3D tower defense, just to see if I can accomplish all of these ideas in both 2D and 3D.